As a kid, this was like my most anticipated movie of like all time. I actually do remember being like super duper pumped for this movie because it's the third one and all the advertising of Venom and the black suit, it made me very excited as a kid. And so when the movie came out, I can fully tell you, as a kid, I enjoyed the movie a lot more then, but even as a kid, I could tell you the first two movies were better than this one. Spider-Man 3 stars Tobe Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, Topher Grace, and Thomas Hayden Church and is about a strange black entity from another world bonds with Peter Parker and causes inner turmoil as he contends with new villains, temptations, and revenge. So if you're watching this review, you guys all know that this movie was a huge disappointment of like all time when it came out. Like a lot of people just completely bashed this movie. It gets made fun of all the time because obviously you know Tobey Maguire aka Peter Parker becomes emo and dances in the street and everyone just loves mocking it and I'm gonna say this right now this movie was disappointing from the get-go when I saw it as a kid like I said but watching it today I can fully tell you this movie is not like an F or dog crap. It's not that. In all honesty, I think this movie is watchable. I think people can actually really like this movie. Like if people told me like I really like Spider-Man 3 I respect it because it is a different movie compared to the other two. Biggest issue, obviously, is Sony completely was like, we want Venom in this movie, and Sam Raimi was like, well, I have Sandman and the new Goblin. I had this all set up for this moment. And they were like, we want Venom, like now. Oh, we're gonna get Topher Grace to play Venom. Oh, we're also gonna ask Bryce Dallas Howard as Gwen Stacy. There's so much thrown in this movie that the movie becomes a complete mess. But besides all that kind of stuff, this movie is really fun in the action apartment. I think these action scenes are really good. Like, honestly, all of them. I have no issues with any of the action scenes. I love the scene with Spider-Man and Sandman fighting each other in this armor truck. It's a fun, exciting scene. I don't love the music as much as Danny Elfman's. I know he does certain score for Sandman and Venom. It's fine, but it's not Danny Elfman. But with this movie, the action scenes are really fun and exciting and they're really well helmed. Like that first action scene we get with Peter Parker versus freaking the new goblin. He first shows up in his new suit. It's like, it's a gruesome fight because they've set up this, this friendship in the other two movies, they've set it up. And in this scene, we get to see them finally fight and the whole movie is kind of ruined because the stupid memory loss bumped his head. I hate that plot line very much, but you know, I feel like that was in the movie because they were like, hey, we need to add in Venom. So let's put away this plot line for the half of this movie. We'll bring it back once we get this Venom thing situated. I think honestly, that's what happened because it's so, annoying because Sandman has really good development as a villain and you like Sandman as a character you're like I kind of understand where you're coming from but then with Harry and the new goblin it's like put on hold and we get the black suit which I do like the black suit it's really cool I like seeing Venom when he's actually got the teeth and Venom but we have Topher Grace as Eddie Brock oh my god guys I mean Talk about a miscasting. I'm sorry. Topher Grace is not like, I love him from that 70s show, okay? That's what I grew up with him watching. He's not Eddie Brock. He, he's, he's very just one-noted. And then when he becomes Venom, I, I cannot take him seriously as a villain. Every time at the very end of this movie, when it shows his face, I'm like, can you just become Venom again? You look cooler, I would say. But, you know, we get freaking Topher Grace because the movies are like, we need to see celebrities' faces. That's why Toby's mask always comes off at the very end of movies. They want to see the star's face. That's, that's what happens. So with this movie, I just feel like the whole Venom situation is so, like, thrown in there. And I don't care for that subplot at all. And another subplot that they add in through half the movie, which I have heard people say they like... I'm not a big fan of Sandman being the one that killed Uncle Ben. I, I'm sorry. It's, it, to me, I hate when third movies or like other movies and franchises go back to the original and they mess with the lore. In this movie, I, I feel the same way. It's like, just stop doing that because I don't care for that stuff. But like I said, the movie has a lot going on. And the worst thing about it, like honestly, not the, the Venom stuff is just... It's thrown in there, a lot of subplots. We have MJ being all worried about getting fired and we have to deal with that relationship. But the my thing that really bothers me, they make Peter Parker a dickhead. He's a complete dick. He, he literally, I hate the scene in the restaurant, which I love Bruce Campbell. 
love his cameo, but I hate the scene where Peter basically compares him to her and Spider-Man to her. And I'm just like, stop, dude. She's trying to talk to you and you're just being a dick. You're overseeing your famous Spider-Man person. I'm just like, no, stop doing that. But besides all of that, I love the stuff with Harry and Peter. I love their fights. The scene where they fight each other and he stabs Peter. That's a great scene. I love all of that. Hell, I like the final battle. The last 10, 20 minutes of this movie, I very much enjoy that final battle. It's awesome if you ask me. But the movie's cluttered and the Venom plotline is really that cluttered. It's because Sandman has good background. The scene where you see him become alive is a beautiful scene. And it's just so ruined because that's a decently good villain developed in this movie. And then you have Harry who gets bumped on the head. The movie's a disappointment. It's a huge disappointment as a kid and it is now. But I can say this. It is not an awful movie to watch. I'm going to give Spider-Man 3 a C+. So my plan was just to review the original trilogy. But I figure I might as well go ahead and review both Amazing Spider-Man movies. Because I've never reviewed the first one. And last time I did the second one as a review, it was one of my shitty cameras and when I had, like, no confidence. So, expect those this later this week, but I gotta get through finals real quick. Anyway, guys, you guys enjoy this review, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.